everyone. This is the Oxford Downtown Diaries. We are on our third installment of our new podcast. We are your dynamic duo, Kelly Westbrook and Kimberly Smith. And not so dynamic today because we recorded already 10 minutes of the show without pulling the record button. So well, I feel like it was less than 10 in my defense. Okay. All right. So we'll give her about eight. So we have a great show today. We are on air with Mike and Louie from the Oxford Tap. If you haven't been there, they were just voted uh, number one chicken wings in Oakland County and really a staple in our community. How many years, you guys? 24. 24 oh, wow. years. So that really okay. is a staple in our small community. And we're going to talk with them today about not only how they got started, but then also what it's like running a successful business in downtown Oxford. Sounds good. I'm excited that they're our first restaurant that we've had on. It is exciting. All right. So welcome to the show. And we're going to definitely just re-talk about how you guys got started um, in Oxford. Or did you have a restaurant before that? Give us your backstory. Uh, I worked for Lou uh, at a restaurant in Shelby Township uh, where I lived at the time. <clears throat> I was... Uh, Working on opening up my own restaurant at that point, uh, Lou and I discussed that we should partner up, and then he took me for a ride to the Oxford Tap, which was then Happy Jacks, and it was inevitable. It seemed it made a lot of sense. What a great town Oxford appeared to be. I'd never been there, but uh, you know there was at that point uh, Starbucks right across the street. You know the the whole walkabout downtown was very appealing to me, and uh, we. Pretty much agreed to partner up that day, and uh, you know the rest is history. That's there. awesome. Yeah, Happy Jacks. That's so funny that you said that because I was having lunch with Jack Curtis at the Oxford Tap the other day, and he mentioned Happy Jacks, and I said I don't remember this. But how many years ago was that? Was it 25, 24, 25. Years okay. Ago? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, prior to that, it was Bill's Bar. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so. Louis, you had multiple restaurants before the Oxford Tap, right? So can you run us through that? Oh, well, I guess the first one was actually in 1988. Uh, I had a deli in Farmington. Ironically called the Grateful Deli. No <laughs> play on words. So that's where I got my first that's cut amazing. into the restaurant business. And uh, from there, 89, we opened up a place in uh, Auburn Hills next to the palace called Hoops, which is still there today. Mm-hmm. And uh, we opened up a couple more hoops, uh, one in Madison Heights, one in Clawson. And then in 98, we moved out to uh, Shelby Township, um, right on 23 Mile Road there across from a, it was a Ford plant at the time. And that's where I, Mike was uh, working over at Mr. B's, running Mr. B's at the time right there in Shelby. And uh, that's where we first met. Okay. So he uh, started working, you know, with us and, and uh, guys got a lot of talent. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't hard to say, hey, let's, let's move on. So. So did you, when you opened hoops and then the one after that and the deli first did you move on and leave those locations there did you close up shop because you wanted a different location or nope. were you running multiple businesses at one time running multiple businesses at one time yeah. okay when i left the deli i sold the deli off but uh when we had the um we had a bigger partnership early on in 94 it kind of got smaller where um we split up the partnership and me and two partners took hoops Auburn Hills and the other ones took the other ones and we kind of just parted ways at that point and, and then we just kind of went on our own from there. Okay. Yeah. I spent many a nights um, after working the Pistons games <laughs> in hoops. That was kind of the hangout spot for the Pistons team. I don't know if it was when you ran it, but yes, big time. right across the street. Yep. Right yep. there. Yep. Awesome. So was, were restaurants your background for both of you? Was that always the plan? It was for me. Yes. I mean, I was going to school to be a paramedic and firefighter and quickly recognized that that was not my cup of tea. Uh, <laughs> m- meanwhile, I was, it, it was the restaurant business was very good to me. I had great Rogers Roost. I worked in Sterling Heights there. It was a great experience. Mr. B's was a great experience. And, uh, it was it recognized that I, that's what I wanted to do for sure. A weird thing when I was a kid. I was supposed to go to Chi-Chi's. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my Chi-Chi's. For some reason, very much to, uh, made it very attractive. Can you yes. come closer? I need to hear you better. Yes. Sorry. Okay. No problem. You have such a great radio voice. Yeah. Chi Chi's. Go on. <laughs> I love Chi Chi's. Anyway, yeah. it was love. it was their dog and pony show at Chi Chi's that really, mm-hmm. for some reason, turned me on to the business. And I just that was always the plan since I was fourteen years old. That's awesome to That's know. Great. Yeah, Louis, what about you? Mine started when I guess I, it was my first job. 
I was 14. I was a busboy at a place in Orchard Park, New York, or East Aurora, New York, um, called the Roycroft Inn, which is ironically still there. But it actually turned me off to the restaurant business because I had to. I went home smelling like ranch dressing every day. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. It was, you know, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was fine. I think I, you know, you made like two dollars an hour back yeah, then or yeah. something crazy. But it was, uh, it was a good awakening into it. And then all through high school and college, I worked at restaurants and bars. And uh, after I graduated college, I actually went to New York for a while and did the corporate thing. And that was. That has that to was be enough. a lot different. Oh, enough. my gosh. Yep. I like you that. were right. looking yeah. for that ranch. I want to look. I want to go work for myself. <laughs> yeah. So, and I had an okay background in some restaurant touring and, you know, decided that was a good route. I had some friends in it, and they, they invited me into it. So. Oh, cool. Very good. And, and you mentioned college. I'm just going to call it out. What college was that? The Irish. Uh-huh. Okay. University yep. of Notre Dame. Yep, yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> South okay. Bend, Indiana. I'm a, I'm a Notre Dame fan through and through. I'll be there this weekend, so oh. I had to had to call you out on it. So what's going on there? Um, so actually, I am singing in the Mrs. Indiana pageant as um, um, one of the hosts this weekend, and it's right in South Bend, so I can't go there without going to Notre Dame. My grandfather has a bench in front of Touchdown Jesus, so we always have to visit. Probably set on that thing. That probably, <laughs> that probably. That's where I got engaged. It's a special wow. bench. Yeah. I lived in that library. Oh my gosh. I bet. That's a hard school. Yeah. Well, there's ways around it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, that's a different show. <laughs> anyway, moving on to more savory topics. Um, so talk about the early years at the tap. When it was the smokiest buyer in the world? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I remember uh, it back then. Interesting. A lot of fun back then too. I mean, it was, I don't know how I would say it. Uh, we had a different reputation back then, I suppose. Uh, you know, back, like I said, back when food is our thing now. You know, we, we are definitely known for what comes out of the kitchen, and that was not our reputation for the first 10 years until Michigan decided that smoking was banned in restaurants. And it was, it was life-changing for us. It really was. We were able to uh, turn people onto our food at that point and not apologize for the smoke. It really it turned everything around for us, and it, it's been far far more exciting and uh, how would you say it satisfying at that point that you could you know I'm definitely a foodie you know so to be, to be able to make the things that I wanted to make and serve the things that I wanted to make and like I said stop by a table and check on them and the first thing they complain about is not is smoke I mean it's really it's been a wonderful change for us and, and uh, so it's just gotten better since then. What about with the um, the wings? Like, who brought on the wings? When did that start? Because the wings have been your thing for a long time. I mean. Yes. Uh, Louie's uh, background from Buffalo, he, he, you know, we were we were a wing stop before, uh, which tap wings are now the big deal. Uh, but it was really him that started it. And then I came across a recipe on my honeymoon over 20 years ago and uh, brought it back from St. Martin, modified it, made it a little more friendly to a larger audience. And, uh. Then we marketed it, and it caught on quickly, and and uh, now it's incredible, really. They really are the best of the best. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I don't waste calories on wings very often, and when <laughs> I do, I go to the tap. <laughs> I will have to try them. Yeah. I you not- Well, we were out for yeah. the um, St. Patty's Pub- pregame, yeah, Pub- and Pub- you had something that looked delicious, too. I can't – some kind of fries. Oh, yeah. I had the Reuben fries. Yes. Yeah, the I, Irish fries. Yeah, yeah. Those were really delicious. I mean, I've been to your restaurant many a times, but I've just never had the wings there. So Shame on you. I know. <laughs> you have other good stuff, too, yeah, though. You. What would you say? So, obviously, you're being um, rewarded or recognized for your wings. What are some of the other top sellers that you have there? Well, macaroni and cheese is oh, the okay. close rival to the, to the wings always. Um, we still sell a ridiculous amount of hamburgers. Really, the steak bites are very popular. Ahi tuna. Ah, oh, yeah. No, ahi tuna. Phenomenal. Is, okay. Is you know what popular. I love, though? And you talked about kind of the change in atmosphere. But one thing that I absolutely love is that I feel like I can still get the bar scene if we're out on like mm-hmm. a Friday or Saturday night or for the bar crawls. But I'm also 100% great about taking my family there even with kids Mm -hmm. and little kids and I feel like it's very family oriented as well and I think a lot of bars and restaurants it's hard to be both and you guys really do that so how do you think that you've managed to accomplish that well we both have families and uh you know Mike's kids come up and I love when they come up there so we've always had 
you know, family around in our restaurants. We've all had kids. Um, people that work for us, you know, their parents met at the tap. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. and then they start working for you. So it's just, it's always been a family atmosphere there. It, it, it's, it's, it's kind of how the community is. It's just yeah. a very family oriented yeah. community sure. to begin with. My boys are nine and 13 in Oxford schools. I, they have to have something to be proud of too. Yeah. So it's important to, to me as well, for sure. Yeah. And the outdoor space is one of my favorite spots to eat at. Um, when does that end of May? I mean, I know that the weather's got a break here. Yeah. We shoot for, you know, early May. Um, okay. There's actually a timeline on it. I think it's May the 1st village. for the village so, ordinance. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's some sort of ordinance on it. Shoot, we have an ordinance against that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess we don't expect to have good weather before May well, 1st, so that's we why. Yeah, we can't count on it. Yeah. It's usually early May is when it starts. People actually are interested in sitting <laughs> out there. So hopefully we can bring even more people with all the events that we have coming up this summer. I think one of the popular ones for you guys will be the Toss and Tuesdays and the Cornhole Nights. On Tuesdays, we'll have sets set up right behind, and we've already gotten quite a few teams, right? We have, yeah. So I think that that'll be a nice addition. Um, you guys used to do some different nights, like bike night and things like that. Have those gone away? They they got too big. Too big. Oh. Okay. Oh, what a great problem to yeah. have. Yeah. They but. really did. You know, we, we shared parking. It just... Uh, well, we were making friends with customers. We weren't making friends with our fellow merchants and stuff, and it was getting to be – I didn't want to fight with my neighbors. Okay. But if the DDA would like to take that on, we would definitely help. The DDA <laughs> could the probably support that from <laughs> afar. We were, we were drawing, on average, 300 people. Wow. That's and what nights were those? Thursday. Thursdays? Okay. Yeah. So concerts uh, in the park night? Unfortunately, we're busy that night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, though, there is that new parking lot behind mm-hmm. you guys now oh, yeah. there you with go. an additional 58 spaces. So Yeah, the thing with the bikers, they wanted to be up close to the yeah. bar. Yeah. They want to show off their bikes. Yep. It's, it's like a bike show is really what it is. It's like a car show. Same, mm-hmm. same idea. They want to be near their bikes. And it, and it really, we were drawing hundreds and hundreds of motorcycles. So it was it was, it was was just too big for, for the shared parking, like I said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Might have to talk about this. Yeah, yeah, we'll take this offline. Yeah. <laughs> so what's on what's on the tap for the on, future? On the tap, really? Wow, nice play, I nice know. play. No problem. Uh, can I talk. Yeah. Uh, we have just uh, met with our contractor yesterday. We are looking to update the facade, uh, make it more attractive. Uh, it's been a few years, and uh, patio as well. We are planning a, a kind of a facelift on that. So same thing to make it a little cozier. Well, I know we're going to talk about grants and DDA grants um, yeah. for facade, but what are you thinking? Are you going with the same theme, the same feel, same colors? What What's your mindset on updates? Uh, I, yes. Is it proprietary? I like. I'm very. I, I like the look of our building now. Uh, we we because we went from one building and then expanded into another. Uh, it's very obviously two different buildings. We want to try to make it look like one space, okay. um, tie it together. Um, continue with the traditional Irish look uh, that we, you know, we, we went after, but it's, it, it's you know, from the salt from the road, it's a little dated, and uh, we just want to update it to make it look nice. Nice. Yeah. Just new windows, new doors, new signs, just give it that updated, updated. needed mm-hmm. look. So, we, we, like you said, we met with a contractor yesterday, and we're going to try to get some design drawings to, Mike's got some great pictures that he's been blogging for a while now, and, and we got some ideas, and we Get some professional to help put us on put it on paper for us to look at. Yeah, you know, will help out. Well, we love the all the updates in Oxford mm-hmm. the past couple of years, and with the facade and signage uh, grant program that the DDA has, I know that it's we've helped thirty two businesses up to this point wow. in the last three years, a little over a hundred thousand dollar investment. So we'd be excited to help you guys too. Um, I have to bring up the new restaurant since we're sitting here talking. So you want to chit chat about that? If you'd like, uh, tell me, tell me about it. <laughs> Lakeville Station was formerly Louis uh, Food and Spirits. Uh, we've they've been in business now for 14 months. Uh, I, I would do it over again in a minute. It's been okay, a great, it's been a great thing. And now, is this exciting. venture together again, or yes. is okay, okay? Yes, he, I, I'm down there doing that. Well, he's selling my shoes at the Oxford Tap as okay. well, and doing double duty there. But uh, you know, we're uh, we're not done yet. Okay, There's more to come. Okay, oh. so. The previous name of that place was Louis, so just not leave it the same. Recognize, <laughs> recognize you here. No. Nope. Nope. All right. The, the, uh, I'll make it quick. The uh, the town was previously called Lakeville. Yes. It's now because of the postal service is now Leonard, uh, but the folks that live around there they don't leave. 
and, and they're very proud of that Lakeville yes. heritage. Uh, so I thought incorporating that that name into the uh, into the restaurant would be helpful, and it has. I mean, the people love it there. They, yeah, they like it's the a great name. So, I'm just giving you a hard time because yeah, I can. Hard. I'll take it. So what kind of food do they have there, and how does that differ from what you offer at the tap? Uh, well, we sell pizza. Okay. Uh, first of all, which because it's my favorite thing in the world, um, so now I just eat it daily. Uh, tacos. Um, uh, we have tap wings, of course. Which I would be crazy not to sell those there. Uh, but it's uh, it's different menu. Uh, we emphasize on desserts, um, crafty cocktails. But, you know, it's a little slower compared to the Oxford tab, which allows us to do uh, things, you know, on a more grand basis, I suppose. But uh, the, the menu is limited compared to, like, say, the Oxford tab menu, for sure. It's mm-hmm. just a smaller production style. Gotcha. Uh, and so what would you say you like best about being an Oxford? I think it's you guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> we did yeah. not Aww. tee him up to say that. <laughs> no, I just want to put that I, out there. That was I, very I will sweet. brag on you guys for a minute because you, you do make it all very much more exciting to be, be a part of what's going on in Oxford there. And I, and I mean that wholeheartedly. We've, we've been doing this for a long time in Oxford with uh, different DDAs, uh, all kinds of different people involved. And it is, it is more exciting than ever. And it's the events you put together. Uh, I can promise my staff it's going to be an amazing night. And, and it really is. The Witches' Nights, the Ladies' Nights mm-hmm. Out, uh, the, the, the just recent pub crawl. Wow. Soup, sweet, you know, yeah, throw yeah, one of yeah. our favorites. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all that stuff is really, it's it's fun to be a part of, and it's it's very much appreciated. You know, makes you want to, you know, get up and go to work every day. Well, thank you. And we were excited to partner with the Oxford Tap on the trolley program, and we're so grateful. And um, I'm excited to see where this program takes us this year, just because um, one of the only – businesses in Oxford to come alongside us and partner with us on the trolley program besides for um, Meyer and Oxford Bank. So I'm excited to activate that partnership a little bit more and be able to really get you guys in touch with all the people that are riding on a daily basis. Um, We had a little over 7,000 people ride the trolley last year. And it's just exciting to think about, you know, if they haven't been into the Oxford tap to just really let them know what you're about and who you guys are. And I also want to mention not only the trolley, I think you guys are one of the first to raise your hand and support us in our events and help us with what we want to do. So not only the trolley, but you are an integral part of what we do and, and one of the businesses we can really count on. So thank you for that. Yeah, and as a DDA, that's what you hope for, right? Especially Absolutely. your longstanding businesses mm-hmm. who have been a part of the community. I think when you guys raise your hand and say, hey, we'll come alongside you, I think that lets the other businesses know, like, hey, we want to be a part of this too. And that's such a big deal to us. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Is there anything else you guys would like to add or let the community know? Nope. No. I'm good. <laughs> okay, well, Short that's great. Thank sweet. you both for coming on the show. It's only our third one, so when, we're, when does this we're air? learning. Uh, this will be Thursday, won't it? Uh, tonight. No. no, it'll go on oh, tonight. It'll tonight. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mike Ridley will be in town, for those that know him, yeah. Saturday night at the Oh, there you okay. go. Perfect. Okay, I go. love that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I know why you're asking. I Perfect. <laughs> what time does that start? He goes on about 8 o'clock. Okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. perfect. Yeah, Very live good. music, too, is oh, so yeah. great. Awesome. So what else do we have going on downtown that we'd like everyone to know? Oh, goodness. So letterboxing is going on right now. Would Tell you... me about letterboxing yeah. because you know I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you have such a love. It's for... a love-hate relationship. Yeah, not so much love, though. Um, so letterboxing is, a, is an event where it's very similar to geocaching, caching. I don't do either, so I'm I'm – speaking about it through my experience at work, but um, there are clues hidden around in different businesses and different locations within downtown of both Oxford and Lake Orion. And you have the entire month of April to find those clues and people who participate in this have a passport and there's stamps in these with the clues and then they can stamp their passport. And so the goal is to get all of these stamps in your passport. And we at the DDA are going to be hiding gift cards, one per week Yep, uh, for a $10 value, I believe it is. Um, And then the first person that finds that in one of our boxes gets to keep that $10 gift card. Um, But we had some ladies come in this morning that were super excited about letterboxing. And we spoke with them and I learned a new term this morning that if you're really into letterboxing, she had said, oh, she doesn't box. 
<laughs> yes, I was actually very impressed with these ladies that came in. So they have done this all over the world. And for many years. Yes, and they came today about an hour. They lived about an hour away. Mm-hmm. And they were all in. And all it was in. really neat because they were the first ones to win the gift cards this week. Yep. And I, there's a whole letterboxing community. And yeah. I only, I we laugh because there are certain events that we love and certain ones that we have to check the box. Um, this one, I just didn't know anything about. Yeah. Um, but I have come to love it the last thir- thir- three years, right? We've done it for three now. Yeah. Um, But I have to tell you, it was so funny because my kids were watching Bluey this morning and there was an episode on and they said, oh, let's go find the letterbox. And, you know, it's an Australian show. And I just had to laugh because I never heard the term. And then, of course, this morning in Bluey. Yeah, that is hilarious. And I think if I understand this correctly and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Susie Sebastian, who was the events coordinator in the downtown Lake Orion DDA, is super into it with her family. And so she brought it on yes. as an event for the Lake Orion DDA. And then we partnered as part of our Stronger Together um, relationship that we have with Lake Orion. So it's it was new to me as well. Yeah. I had never heard of it. Um, but there is a huge community that is very into it. And it's, it's, it's fun for them and it's fun to watch them. Yeah, I think if you've never done it before, grab a notebook, yeah. go around and look at the clues yeah. um, either on the website or on our Facebook or I believe it's Atlas. It's Atlas. So we have, we'll have all the information posted soon, but um, there is a website you have to go in and create a profile or an account and then that will allow you access to the clues and then you get a little clue and it'll tell you where it is located. Yeah, but... It, for families, I mean, with kids, mm-hmm. what a fun thing to like do if you want to come out this hunt. weekend. Yeah. I love that maybe it helps you to discover stores or some of our businesses that you haven't been in before. Yeah. And even if you're not buying anything on that trip because you're with your kids, at least you know that business is there. Maybe you have found some new products that they sell in mm-hmm. your downtown. So it really is a marketing tool for our businesses. And I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Absolutely. One of the things we're here for. Yeah. So, and then on our next show, we have Heather coming Mm -hmm. in from Wild and Rooted, and we're going to chat with her. So we're actually going to have two shows posted, um, I think one tonight and then one this weekend. So look out for that. Very good. And also we have our spring cleanup on April 21st from 12 to 4. Please come help us. So anyone who has some time during that day, any of your employees that are- Don't stare at our guests. (laughs) I'm looking for you to pass the message. Um, We need some help. We're going to be cleaning up downtown, preparing it for planting flowers and whatnot. So we also be staining the trolley. Oh, yeah. You like to stain our paint. Come Mm -hmm. on out. All those things. So So, anything. And then other than that, I don't know that we have a whole lot until we kick off our summer series in early June. Yep. Looking forward to it. It's going to be good. All right. So have a great day, folks. Thanks so much. Bye.